it says, what is a relation? A relation is a set of ordered pairs x, y that matches the domain, which we term the x values, to items in the range, which are the y values. So if I look at just a set of ordered pairs, the domain would be the x values, and the range would be the y values. And if I had repeats, I don't necessarily need to write that down. A function, which is what we're going to be dealing with primarily, a function is a relation that matches one item in the domain to one item in the range. So what you're looking at is you're going from domain to range. So that's an x value to a y value. We say a function is one to, we say a function is one to one. One x to one y. We're not saying one y to one x, it's only one directional. So it's only x to y. In an ordered pair, x is called the independent variable, and we'll see that oftentimes in explanations of problems. And y is called the dependent variable. And that's where you get the whole idea of independent variable. That's your input. Dependent variable is your output. So in other words, Put in x, get out y. Put in x, get out y. In x, out y. And y is called a dependent variable because it's dependent upon x. Depends upon the x value you put in. Domain. That's going to be a biggie for us. And you spent some time on domain in college algebra. Domain. Set of all real numbers, and I usually use a notation for this. That means all real numbers, except first thing we need to concern ourselves with is denominators. The denominator can't be zero. That's an exclusion. So any x value that makes a denominator zero would be excluded from the domain. So for example, if I had x plus 1 over x squared minus 1, we'd say that x squared minus 1 can't be 0. Or what I would normally do is this, denominator is what I think, can't be 0. And so this says that x squared can't be 1, or x can't be what? one and negative one, or we normally would write it plus or minus one. Plus or minus the square root of one. I didn't mean to do that, but I did it anyway. Or x can't be plus or minus one. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. So the domain here would be all real numbers except for plus or minus 1. So if I were looking at a number line for all real numbers, so this would be infinity, this would be minus infinity. At negative 1, there would be an open dot, and at 1, there would be an open dot. And the domain would be everything except for those two things, excluding plus or minus one. Domains play a bigger role in this course than they, believe it or not, than they did in college algebra. The second thing that we need to concern ourselves about is that if I'm dealing with an even indexed radical, 
in this case square root, that the radicand, which is under what's under the radical, must be greater than or equal to zero, must be positive, for an even indexed radical. Odd index radical is all real numbers. But if I take, what's the square root of a negative number? Odd. It's imaginary, yeah, I. Uh, it's gonna have an I involved. For even indexed only. So what do I know? I know that the radicand must be greater than or equal to zero. So one minus three x must be greater than or equal to zero. Minus three x is greater than or equal to minus one. Or x is what? What do I write here? Well, why is it less than or equal to? I'm dividing by a negative number. So when you divide by a negative number, it reverses the direction of the inequality. So in that case, this is the domain. 